If you were to go under your house into the crawl space, this is what it would look like. This is the floor that you walk around on. And then this floor is supported by floor joists. Here's one that's an important one. It's called an end joist. And then we have a joist here, we have a joist here. And normally we have them every 16 inches all the way down the, uh, you know, the floor of the house. So that's what supports your, your, uh, your house. We want to make sure that that stays on the foundation. So when you jump on your floor, you'll feel some spring, and that's, on, that's the joists that are springing. And this one right here is especially critical, this one on the end, because if this one on the end goes sliding that way, it'll take the whole, uh, the whole house with it. And want to make sure that that does not happen. So what we do in a retrofit is we connect this piece of wood, the end joist, and we connect it to the uh, mud sill so that this end joist cannot go sliding on top of the mud sill. Now the next thing we do is we make sure that this mud sill is bolted to the foundation right here. Now there's a very, very serious weakness in the building code. And what it says is that there are only, only three nails need to be used to attach the uh, end joist to the sill. You can see it right here in, the, uh, in this uh, table right here. Now the reason that's such a problem is because if you look at this joist, and it's 24 feet long, and many of them are, and you only have three nails attaching it to the mud sill, um, it's just not going to be enough. You know, that's a lot of force. Let's say there's 5,000 pounds of force trying to push on three nails and it's not going to make it. So this is the number one thing that we address in uh, any seismic retrofit. And of course, we go ahead and uh, bolt it to make sure that there's no, uh, no, no sliding there. And that's what a retrofit consists of. So the question is, what do we do about it? This is a very uh, serious deficiency in the building code and it still exists. So let me show you what happens when you know these houses are damaged. Let's look at a real house right now. So here you can see this house was bolted. So it's got a nice bolt here, it's got a nice bolt here. They're very close together. But because this uh, end joist right here wasn't attached to the mud sill and the mud sill runs all the way along here and then it runs all the way along here, because it's not attached, it just slid right out the mud sill. So that is the big problem. And that's something that we really want to guard against to make sure that you know you can save your house. So this is what we do. This is an image here of the, you know, there's the there's the end joist, there's the mud sill. We want to make sure they stay together because as shown here in this arrow, earthquake forces come this way, they push on the end joist, but it's you know just sitting there on the mud sill with just a couple nails so it's going to slide off so what we do we install something called shear transfer ties those are pieces of metal and that way when the earthquake force comes this way that metal has attached the end joist to this mud sill right here and we end up keeping the floor from sliding off the foundation. This is another case where the fact that the end joist was attached to the mud sill with only three nails caused a you know, catastrophic failure. So as the earthquake force went this way and tried to push the end joist off of the mud sill, it just slid right off. You know, if you imagine, again, if there's 5,000 pounds of force trying to push, the, you know, push on a house, and there's only three nails holding it to, uh, you know, to the foundation or to the mud sill, uh, it's going to fail like this uh, every time. So if you were to crawl into your house, uh, this is exactly what you would see. Here's the floor you walk around on. Here is the end joist. Here is the mud sill. And right here is the foundation. It's the exact same thing as you see up here in this drawing. Here's the floor you walk on. Right here is the end joist. This is the mud sill. And this is the foundation. Now what we want to do is make sure that everything remains on top of the foundation so that the floor does not slide off of it. So what we do is we take this end joist right here and we attach it to the mud sill with the shear transfer ties. These shear transfer ties are also called shear, uh, also called framing anchors. So this is a framing anchor or shear transfer tie. This is a framing anchor or shear transfer tie. And when the earthquake force tries to push the end joist off the mud sill, we keep the two attached with these shear transfer ties.